Hey fam, welcome back to my channel. Thank you all so much for coming back. How is everyone doing? You can see I'm fine. <laughs> and if you're coming by my channel for the first time, you're welcome as well. This is Virtue Grace. Have you subscribed? I guess no. So please click the subscribe button and the bell beside it. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Fam, so ever since the coronavirus pandemic broke out, we've um, seen a lot of innovations all across the world and, you know, uh, in Africa in particular, I've been bringing you series of stories from across the continent of how individuals, groups, and you know, government agencies have been um, innovating processes, systems, and equipment to respond to the you know the coronavirus pandemic. Um, particularly, I highlighted incidents from I think Ghana, where um, test kits have been manufactured and uh, to be deployed. For testing, uh, I brought you stories from Nigeria, where you know we've had some government innovations, the um, disinfecting chambers, and all of those you know innovations. I brought you you know a story from Kenya about the Kenyan students from Kenyatta University um, and the other individuals. You know, so many innovations. Uh, just go through my playlist, and you see all of those stories there. And we got a very interesting story from Senegal with their $1 testing um, system, you know, Senegal also deployed the use of um, robots in the hospital and then of course the controversial drink from our gassy people, you know what I'm saying. So today the story is from Rwanda. Rwanda has, you know, also been innovative over the um, period of the response with the um, deployment of, I think, drone technology to, um, you know, disinfect and all of that. This time around, they've deployed the use of robots. The government has deployed the use of robots in the hospitals to speed up service delivery to um, patients and individuals just visiting the hospitals or, um, or you know, other public places. The robots are manufactured by a Belgian company known as Zorabot and Zorabot has been catering to um, human needs such as pediatrics you know in the hospital setting so in the wake of the pandemic they customized their robots you know to respond to the COVID situation as is prevalent now and speaking to newsmen um, the CEO of Robotics Africa um, disclosed that these robots that have been deployed in, in, in Rwanda, I, I was about to say Uganda, <laughs> these robots that have been deployed in Rwanda are going to assist with, you know, checking patients' vital signs. And, you know, it would, it would help detect abnormal temperatures, thereby prompting healthcare workers to do the needful in terms of testing and treatment and all of that, in case the person tests positive to COVID-19, of course. And then another thing that, um, according to the CEO, these robots are going to do is they are going to help deliver essential supplies to patients. Um, you know, that according to him, going in to attend to patients' needs take a lot of resources. You know, they have to change their PPEs often each time they go to see um, this um, patient. So with the help of this robot, the cost on PPEs are going to be saved and um, there will be less physical contact with patients often. And that, of course, also reduce the chances of infection because um, infection of healthcare workers has been on the increase. Here in Nigeria, for instance, we've been having you know, increasing records of um, healthcare workers responding to this pandemic, getting infected and all of that. So this, of course, will help reduce that human uh, human, human to human contact. Then another thing that these robots are going to do is they're going to detect when people aren't putting on face masks. You know, putting on face masks is a challenge and enforcing it is also an uphill task across Africa, I know for sure, because here in Lagos, it's, it's an uphill task. So people put on their masks, but then their noses are open, they only cover their mouths. And we see people even, you know, in the healthcare response, some are guilty of that, I'm not saying all, especially those not in the hospitals anyway, but you know, those responding, we see them on TV often. They put on face masks, but then their nostrils are, their noses are open, only their mouths are covered. Some do not even put them on at all, and they go out there interacting. So these robots are going to detect and remind individuals to put on their face masks. 
<laughs> Another important service that these robots are going to deliver, these robots are going to help in contact tracing. Because of course, when individuals come into a certain place, according to the CEO, Mr. Benjamin um, Karenzi, these robots are going to, of course, take the biodata information of these individuals and, st and store them. So in the event that, you know, someone is found to have tested positive to the COVID-19, who has had contact with these individuals in this particular space, the information is readily available, you know, to help trace the other individuals for further services. I find this very welcoming and interesting because we all know how much this pandemic has taken a toll on resources of nations and responding is, is quite a challenge. So innovations are welcome as much as possible, especially when they are going to help cut down costs and speed up access to services. But what I find disturbing is the threats that these innovations, especially these robots, pose to human job security. In a few years from now, I'm afraid a lot of people might be out of job and, you know, a lot of the social implications of being jobless and increasing unemployment rates in, in society might be on the rise. But what do you think? Like I always say, drop a comment, let's interact as usual. Um, if you've not subscribed, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell beside it so you get notified each time I upload new videos. That's the reason. <laughs> Thank you guys. I will see you in my next video. But until then, stay safe, healthy, and below abiding. The sun is coming up on me. It's morning. I'm recording in the morning just before I go to work. All right. Bye. I'm out. <music>
uh, but also you know looking at other ways that they can support. I know very particularly they've been designed to help with the mass screening um, of temperature, but also even taking vital um, you know records for the patients that are going to be within this treatment center and the other treatment centers that we have across the country. Uh, we also even had to you know extend the reach to even think beyond just clinical care. What else can they support with? Um, uh, and I think we've seen in many countries where robots are being used uh, to support uh, the healthcare interventions. And for us, it was a question of why not Rwanda? There are three, six areas where these robots will be very supportive. These robots will perform temperature screening in our treatment centers. These robots will detect people walking in treatment center not wearing masks so that uh, with a voice a command post can be informed and quickly respond. These robots will continue education for patients and staff to enhance their knowledge, especially to comply with the government measures in the fight against COVID-19. Robots will facilitate patients with self-diagnosis at entrance or at the exit points. Finally, robots will be able to deliver food and other essential products for, to patients who are here in the treatment center. Basically, these robots will help us to reduce the risk of contamination of our health staff, which is a key achievement because one of the challenges we are facing worldwide is a rate of infection of health professionals while treating people suffering of COVID. So any opportunity of reducing contact of health professionals with patients who are sick, it's still a way of reducing the risk of being infected. They might go there essentially for treating, but for other duties, these machine, these robots will help enough to reduce the risk of contamination. Uh, it's uh, measuring the temperature, and as you can see, it can measure multiple temperatures at, at the go. And uh, here, the, the, the key advantage of this is that people, let's say if it's posted uh, at a, a public space. Like uh, in a gas station. Yeah, like in a gas station, like a border post, uh, or a market. Uh, the, there's, no, there's no need to use the... the Demo flash. Yeah. So yeah. here it's giving uh, abnormal ten temperature mm -hmm. alert. So if somebody ever comes, and has a high temperature, we've decreased the threshold to demonstrate. So if somebody ever come and has a, an abnormal temperature, he notifies them, tells them where to go, and also alerts the command center.